Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we will be creating three new home decor DIY projects using wood and items from the Dollar Tree and we'll be creating high-end looks. Now I will walk you through step by step showing you how to create these items and the cost for each project would be around $5 or less. Now for your convenience, I provided a list of supplies and tools used to make these projects in the description box below. Now I'm so happy to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I wanted to say hi and welcome back to my awesome subscribers and visitors to my channel. Now if you are a new visitor to my channel today and you love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now, let's just jump right into those projects. Now the first project will be a set of lantern style candle holders. Now for this project, we'll need two square art pieces from the Dollar Tree, two packs of quart craft sticks from Lowe's for 98 cents each. We'll also need two 36 inch square dowels from the hardware store or garden stakes from Dollar General. Oh, and we'll need two seven inch glass vases to hold your candles or greenery. Now we're gonna start by staining our craft sticks so I'm protecting my work surface and gathering up my supplies. And as you all know, I will be using my favorite Jacobian stain by Mimwax for this project. So we're going to be staining about 40 sticks for this project, but you want to include a few extra just in case you make a cutting mistake or you'll have a few extras to fix some broken sticks. So we want to make sure we stain both sides of the sticks and we're going to make sure we get those edges really well. And once they're all stained, sit them out to completely dry. So next we'll grab those square dowels or our garden stakes. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure and mark the stick in increments of about nine inches and you should get four sections per stick. Now once that first stick is marked, you can just line it up and transfer the marks over to the second stick and then take it out to cut it and your sticks are all cut here at about nine inches. So now we're gonna go ahead and stain these pieces as well. Now you wanna make sure that you cover the entire piece as well as the ends of these pieces. And then once they are all stained, you can sit them to the side to dry. And now we're gonna take those square art pieces and we're gonna remove any embellishments or ribbons that may be on the front. And then flip them over and remove those picture hanging hooks. And we're also gonna remove any stickers that may be on the back. Now we wanna make sure that the frames are secure on all the corners before we start, since sometimes they can come apart. And then we're gonna take four of those square dowel pieces and we're gonna be placing one of these in each one of the corners. So I'll be securing these with a one inch wood screw in each corner and this will give the project more stability. Now to hold the dowels in place temporarily, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a dot of hot glue in each corner, and I wanna place one of those square dowels into the place. Now before adding any of the screws, I'm just gonna mark, and then I'm going to drill a pilot hole to prevent the wood from splitting. And for this, I'm gonna be using my drill with a 3 32nd size drill bit to drill those holes. And 
and then once all those holes are drilled you could just go ahead and apply those nails one screw at a time in each corner and now everything is nice and secure So now what we're going to do is we're going to start adding those craft sticks around the base of our project. So we're just going to start by taking uh, one of the craft sticks and we're going to lay that stick on the base. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark the length on the underside with a pencil. And then we're going to take our scissors and cut it off along those, uh, those lines that we marked. And then we're just going to test fit it and then secure it with some hot glue. Now we're going to continue to add these craft sticks around the base until it's covered. And here is the base fully covered with the craft sticks. So the next row of sticks is going to be on the actual dowels and so what we're going to do is we're going to measure these where they're one inch apart. So I'm just taking my ruler and I'm marking that one inch up from the base on each dowel. And once everything is marked I'm going to take my craft stick and I'm going to line it up with that one inch mark and then mark the underside for cut lines with a pencil. And then all you have to do is cut the stick to size on those lines you marked, check the fit, and then secure it in place with hot glue. And you're just going to continue to add the sticks around in the same manner. And here is a row completed. So we're just going to continue this process all the way up the dowel sticks. We want to make sure that we evenly space those all the way up to the top. And here it is all fully covered. And now you're just going to repeat this process for the second wall art piece. And here are both completed. Now the inside of this is a light brown and I originally thought I was going to leave it this way but I decided to stain it to match the rest of the lantern piece. So I'm just going to apply some of my stain with a very small brush. I'm going to start going around the edges. You kind of want to work fast since the stain absorbs fairly quickly into this MDF type of material. And then after I do the edges, I'm just going to work around the edges of the inside and then fill that in as well. So once both of the insides are complete, you can touch up those cut edges if you want to of those craft sticks. And this is completely optional. Now, as you all know, I like a finished look on my pieces, so I'm going to cover the bottom with a scrap piece of black foam. Now, to apply it, I'm just going to add a bead of hot glue around the bottom of the piece, and then I'm going to press it down onto the foam. Now once both pieces are dry, you're just going to um, brush it off and then lay on your cutting mat. And I'm going to be using an X-Acto knife to trim off that excess around each one of the lantern pieces. And here are both pieces with a nice clean finish. Now I will be using these vases to place inside my lanterns and you can add some real candles as shown here. You can add greenery or you can add battery operated candles. You just do whatever you like.
And here is that completed project on display. I just love how these turned out. Now I really love how these wood pieces look with the Jacobian stain and it perfectly fits into this fall theme. Now I can definitely see these being used on a tabletop, coffee table, a mantle, or just anywhere that you like. You all have to let me know in the comments where you would display them. Now project number two is a two tier beaded tray. Now for this project we'll need two circle wood pieces from Walmart for 97 cents. We'll also need a seven inch piece of a one and a quarter dowel and I had this left over. And we'll need some 20 millimeter or 16 millimeter beads that and I got these from Amazon. Now we're going to start with removing all of the staples and labeling from those circle pieces. So I'm going to be going ahead and staining all of the wood pieces in this project. So once again, I'm protecting my work surface and gathering up all of my supplies. So I'm going to go ahead and stain those circle pieces first. I want to do both sides of the circles and I want to make sure I get those edges very well. And then I'm going to go ahead and stain the surface of that dowel rod. There's no need to get the ends on this so that, since they will not be shown in this project. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and stain all of those beads. Now, I used about 60 of the 20 millimeter size and um, they were fairly easy to stain just by rolling them a rag in the rag a little bit. Um, I noticed that after I stained, the insides didn't get stained very well. So I'm just taking a Q-tip right here and I'm staining the insides as well. And once that's done, you just sit these out to completely dry. All right, everything is dry and now we are ready to build our tray. Now I want to start by finding the centers of those circles and I'm going to be marking that with a pencil. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole where I've marked it and I'm drilling this with a 3 32nd bit and um, I'm going to drill that first hole and then I'm going to stack the other circle underneath, drill all the way through so both centers will be in the same place on each piece. And then I want to take my dowel rod, I want to mark the center of each end and what I want to do is I want to drill a hole straight down the center of the rod on each end and you want to make sure you hold your drill as straight as possible. So now that our hole drilling is done, we can go ahead and start to embellish our tray. So I'm going to take my 20 millimeter wood beads and I want to start placing them around the edge of each one of the circles and I'm just going to be securing these with hot glue. And here are all of our beads on one of the trays. And we're just going to repeat this for a second tray. And this is what they'll look like. Now to secure everything together, we're going to be having that dowel rod in between the two trays. Now to secure everything together, I will be using two of these one and three quarter wood screws um, for this project. So I'm going to be starting by placing one screw into the non-beaded side of one of the pieces and I want to screw it in until it protrudes the other side about a quarter of an inch. 
And once it does protrude a little bit, I'm just gonna take that dowel rod and put it into that pilot hole. And I'm just gonna start screwing it on by hand just to make sure it's going in nice and even. And then I'm taking my drill and securing it all of the way. And then once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and take the top piece and we're gonna add that. So I'm gonna put a screw into the top side where the beads are and I wanna screw that in and get that started as well. And once that protrudes through, I'm gonna hand crank it a little bit, then screw it in all the way with the drill. And now that everything is secured together, this is good to go. Check it for evenness and now we can just decorate it and see how it looks. And here I have it on display. Now I just love these little pumpkins and florals at the Dollar Tree this year and they really look great on this piece. Now the beading really turned out great too and I'm super happy with it. And check it out, you could flip it over and use it the other way. This is completely reversible, I love it. There's so many ways you could decorate with this piece. Now project number three is a gather wall art piece. Now for this project, we'll be using a one by two by eight piece of wood from the Home Depot for a dollar 18. I'm just showing you an end piece with the barcode so you can see what I'm using. We'll also use this gather sign from the Dollar Tree and we'll use a wire basket from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing we're gonna do is to cut up our eight feet piece of wood for your frame. Now we'll have two pieces at 22 inches and two at 12 inches and we'll adjust that a little later. So now we're gonna go ahead and stain all of our pieces for our frame. Now we'll be using that Jacobian stain and we're gonna go ahead and choose the good side of our wood. And we're gonna start staining the long pieces on the fronts and the sides and the ends. Now for the short pieces, we only need to do the fronts and the sides since the ends won't be showing in this project. And here is everything stained and we can sit this to dry. So while we have these drying, we're gonna go ahead and take our waste basket and I'm gonna remove the tags and then I'm gonna take a pair of wire clippers and I wanna remove that top edge trim on the basket. Now you wanna make sure you clip as close to that top edge as possible. And then we're gonna do the same thing at the bottom edge. And now that both ends are removed, we're locating the center seam of that basket and that's where we're gonna cut our basket apart. Now once it is cut apart, you kinda wanna manipulate and stretch the basket. Um, you wanna stretch that wire into a flat, uniform, rectangular shape. And here it is, and now that we have our shape, we're gonna take our wood pieces and lay them out on top just for a test fit. Now after getting everything in place, this is where I realized that the side pieces will need to be trimmed just a bit. So I measured and marked those side pieces and I trimmed them down from 12 inches to eight and a half inches. And here they all are trimmed in place and I'm just doing one more test fit to make sure everything is good to go. So now we can assemble our frame. Now we want to make sure that the stain side is facing down. Now I'm going to be using this wood glue from the Dollar Tree for this project. So I'm going to be applying the glue to each end of the short pieces. And then I want to apply those short pieces in between the two longer pieces and then I'm going to secure it with four or five staples along the seam. Now I'm gonna be repeating this process for the other three sides of the frame as well. Now once the frame is all stapled, you can apply pressure clamps if you like to each end.
and then just clean up any glue from those seams that may have oozed out. Now while that dries, we're going to work on the gather sign. So we'll be painting it with this black acrylic paint. So you just want to remove all of the hang tags and you want to apply one good coat of that black acrylic paint on the front and sides of the sign. Now I'm really impressed with the quality of these signs. They are this really strong MDF material and they take the paint very well. And once it's completely painted, sit it to the side to dry. So now our frame is dry. So we can start to add our basket wire. So we're just gonna lay that wire out on the back of the frame and we're gonna start to um, adjust it and apply staples all around that wire on the frame. Now this wire is very forgiving and it can be adjusted very easily. And so you could just go around the frame and apply staples where needed. And once our wire is nice and secure, we can finally add our gather sign to the frame. So to attach it, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut that hang string on the back in half. Then once we get it nice and centered, I'm gonna feed that string through the back where it falls on that wire. And then I'm gonna hold that sign in place while I uh, turn the frame over to the back. So once we do that, we're just gonna take that string, we're gonna uh, wire it through the wires and tie it into place so it's nice and secure. Now you can glue this as well, but I wanted this sign to be interchangeable, so that's why I am chose to tie it. All you have to do is trim those tails down, flip the frame back over, and you see your finished look. And now we can place the sign on display. How cute did this turn out? Now these new signs at the Dollar Tree are such great quality and they really look high end when they're painted. Now I am so happy to have found them at my Dollar Tree and I hope you guys have an opportunity to find them too. I had so much fun with these projects today you guys. You have to let me know in the comments which one of these projects today was your favorite. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook for the latest new sneak peeks and giveaways. Thank you so much for visiting and checking out my tutorial today. If you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below and turning on that notification bell. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.